loop gain and obstructive sleep apnea, interesting phenotype, and of course, the whole area of and field of sleep medicine has changed quite considerably um, in the last five to 10 years. Traditionally, obstructive sleep, sleep apnea was seen primarily as an anatomical issue, that the airway was too small, this was increasing airway resistance, and this was predisposing the individual to have either a stopping of the breath or a, redu a reduction to the flow of their breathing. The four phenotypes of sleep apnea, the one I'm going to speak about now is called loop gain. And loop gain is basically the chemosensitivity of your body to the buildup of carbon dioxide. If you have high loop gain, it means that you have a greater sensitivity to the accumulation of carbon dioxide. And what this means is that if you stop breathing during your sleep, carbon dioxide is going to increase in the blood because it's not able to leave the blood through the lungs. And as carbon dioxide is increasing, at some point, breathing is going to be restored and the individual breathes hard and heavy. And if they have an exaggerated response to the buildup of carbon dioxide, their ventilation post apnea, when they resume breathing, is going to be exceedingly hard, is going to be exceedingly heavy, and they're going to breathe far too much air. This is going to cause too great a loss of carbon dioxide. And now the individual, during the breath hold, or during the stopping of their breathing, they were in a state of hypercapnia, too high CO2 in the blood. But during the ventilation post apnea, they went from hypercapnia to hypocapnia, too little CO2 in the blood. And as carbon dioxide is the neuro drive to breathe, if CO2 levels in the blood are low, the brain is not going to send a message to breathe until CO2 accumulates up to that threshold. And the other thing about carbon dioxide is that carbon dioxide also plays a role in the functioning of the upper airway dilator muscles. The neural drive or inputs to the upper airway dilator muscles, which are designed to help maintain an open airway during sleep, that drive is low when carbon dioxide is low. So if you have an individual who is going from hypercapnia to hypocapnia, and if their breathing is all over the place during sleep, they too will have poorer functioning of the upper airway muscles. So how do you address loop gain? How do you measure loop gain? Loop gain can be measured by using breath hold time. If you measure the chemosensitivity of the body to carbon dioxide during wakefulness, it will give you an indication of the chemosensitivity to carbon dioxide during sleep. How do you measure the chemosensitivity of the body to carbon dioxide? You can use breath to time. Take a normal breath in through your nose, normal breath out through your nose, you pinch your nose, you hold your breath, and you're timing it in seconds until you feel the first definite desire to breathe, or the first involuntary urges to breathe, or the first you may feel, for example, involuntary contractions of your breathing muscles. And your breath at the end should be fairly normal. If you have a low breath hold time, if your breath hold time is 10-15 seconds, it's an indicator that you have high loop gain. And if you have high loop gain, you have an exaggerated ventilatory response to the buildup of carbon dioxide during obstructive sleep apnea. And what's happening here is that the obstruction and the resuming ventilation is feeding in itself. So it's a cycle. So how do we reduce loop gain? Practice breathing exercises designed at improving and reducing and the chemosensitivity of the body to the accumulation of carbon dioxide. Slow breathing, light breathing. Breathing that you're slowing down your breathing sufficiently to allow carbon dioxide to increase a little in the blood to create air hunger. And you practice slowing down the breath, that you're feeling a slight air hunger, and over time this reduces, and it's pretty quick. We would expect, you know, a significant change to breathing in about two weeks, when one practices the exercises. So you're practicing the exercises, breathing exercises, simple breathing exercise, breathing in and out through the nose. That in turn reduces your chemosensitivity to the buildup of CO2, that in turn improves your breath hold time. That reduces loop gain. 30% of the adult population are predisposed to high loop gain. How can you change it other 
and practice breathing exercises. And this is where there's a role for breathing re-education in sleep. We need investigation of breathing re-education in sleep. We need to look at the impact of not just breathing through the nose during wakefulness and sleep, which in turn, of course, is going to improve sleep, but also functional breathing, the adaptation of slow breathing, improving the biochemistry of breathing, improving the biomechanics of breathing, and seeing how does that impact on sleep.